Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and the only reason those two statements are true is because I don't have what it takes to be Batman. Now granted, some of that is because I just don't have the money, but there's more to being Batman than owning a bunch of expensive gadgets. Becoming Batman takes years of acquiring and perfecting an untold number of skills driven forward by nothing but tragedy, a desire for justice, and sheer determination. I just don't have most of those things. Could a normal person reach Batman's level? Well, his workout routine was published in the Batman Files, and most fitness experts agree it would pretty much kill you. This is a guy who can bench 1,000 pounds and leg press 2,500 pounds. Those numbers are in range of the world records for both skills, and he can still run fast enough to keep up with the best speed and endurance athletes in the world. But maybe it's not as crazy as it sounds. In the book Becoming Batman, written by kinesiology and neuroscience professor Dr. E. Paul Zare, serious consideration is given to the limits of the human body, and the author himself concludes a dedicated trainer could more or less become Batman with 20 years, a strict study and workout schedule, a crazy sleeping schedule, and 4,000 calories a day. For comparison's sake, I only need 2,700 calories a day, and we're actually around the same height. But we all know the best way to determine how Batman can become Batman is to study his life ourselves. Everyone knows the basic story. Billionaire child has his parents killed in front of him, swears vengeance on crime, becomes a superhero. But today we're exploring the in-between years. Get ready for a full rundown of Bruce Wayne's life, training, and the extended origin of Batman. <laughs> So we all know Bruce Wayne's parents were killed in front of him when he was eight years old, and this triggered some serious willpower. He decided as a child that he would become a one-man war on crime. Realistic? Well, probably not. Even the most skilled fighters in the world have trouble in outnumbered 10 to 1 by opponents with weapons, but Bruce had the backing of the Wayne fortune to help even the odds as much as he could. From 8 to 14, he mastered knot tying, acting, acrobatics, martial arts, and all the sciences, maths, and languages available to him. Which is really impressive, but not impossible. Bruce Wayne's IQ is generally estimated to be around 192, and he has a knack for multitasking. Could a dedicated genius child manage to pick up all of those skills with a packed schedule? Sure, especially considering the mind training. Bruce Wayne streamlined his education by teaching himself speed reading, lip reading, and total recall along the way. In an attempt to learn as much as he could, as quickly and efficiently as he could, Bruce made sure to master as many learning methods as he could. Bruce is likely ambidextrous, or capable of using either hand as the dominant one and his expertise in memory, numbers, and learning suggests he might have synesthesia. Synesthesia is a phenomenon in which certain sensory experiences become tied together in your mind. For example, you might see different letters as certain colors, or a mental map of numbers might appear when you try to solve equations. It's highly suspected that we all kind of have this to varying degrees, but intense training or genetics can allow you to experience it to a greater degree than the average person. If you have synesthesia, you probably know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, it's kind of hard to explain. Take a look at these two shapes. One is a boba, and the other is a kiki. Now, I'm not giving any hints, but go ahead and tell me which is which. Well, there's about a 90% chance that you said this one is a boba, and this one is a kiki. Why? Well, I'm not really sure. Boba is generally considered a rounder word, and kiki is generally considered a sharp one? And if you're going to assign a color to the letter A, it's probably red. Our young Bruce Wayne would train associations like these to read faster, memorize better, perform complicated equations in his head, and graduate at the age of 14. 
after which he used his finances to obtain the best college education available. All of them. For the next six years, Bruce Wayne audited classes at Cambridge, Sorbonne, the Berlin School of Science, and over a dozen other prestigious universities. But he was never in one place for long. Bruce Wayne usually only stayed at his current college for a few semesters, picking up the courses he deemed relevant and moving on to the next expert. This bears striking similarities to a method of study used by Sherlock Holmes in the book A Study in Scarlet, during which Holmes demonstrated that he only focused on gathering information important to his work and strove to ignore things like astronomy, politics, and literature so his head wasn't bogged down with useless information he had to shift through. Sure enough, Bruce Wayne took similar cues by studying the detective and criminal worlds in his spare time. He trained under renowned detectives Harvey Harris and Dan Mallory, and paid a ton of money to take private boxing lessons from the current heavyweight champion, Ted Grant, or Wildcat. But once he reached the age of 20, Bruce Wayne was finally ready to fight crime. As an FBI agent. Yeah, he actually underwent FBI training. And he scored perfectly on every test, except for gun handling. But when admitted into the FBI, he only stayed for six weeks before deciding it wasn't for him. At this point, Bruce Wayne was skilled in almost everything you would think you might need to fight crime. But he wasn't the best. The young billionaire traveled east to find the best and become even better. Now, there's a lot we don't know about Batman's pre-Batman campaign across the world. He was training in some areas completely out of touch with civilization, so some of this might be a little out of order. But we do know his first stop was an ancient temple in the Peak Tucson Mountains of Korea. It took him six weeks and $40,000 in bribes, but Bruce managed to train under a legendary martial artist named Kiragi for nearly a year. It's never outright stated, but based on the part of the world Bruce was in and the mannerisms of his master, focusing on patience, peace, and clearing of the mind, it's likely Bruce was either studying Bulgyo Musul or Kuksul Won with an emphasis on the Bulgyo Musul forms. This is a system of martial arts that can be traced all the way back to Buddhism, and intertwining the physical and mental aspects of battle with everyday life to achieve perfect balance. This system eventually branches into things like Gungdo, Taikiyon, the Hipkido arts, and Taekwondo. Which, incidentally, I happen to have a black belt in. Just saying. The point is that this system attempts to study all traditional forms of Korean martial arts, and does not consider itself limited to any single discipline. So within one year, Bruce Wayne basically learned every Korean fighting style at once, along with a certain amount of mental training. He went to France next, and there he worked alongside a detective and mercenary named Henry Ducard, known across the world for his ability to track anyone down. The relationship helped further hone Bruce's detective skills, but there was eventually a falling out due to the unnecessarily brutal and deceptive tactics Ducard used. Bruce Wayne left civilization again to find Willie Doggett instead, a legendary investigator and tracker in the wilderness of Alaska. Grandmaster Chu Chun Li taught Bruce Kung Fu likely in a combination of each form. And Shihan Matsusa spent nine months training him in the art of Tumo meditation. Under this technique, Bruce can limit the amount of oxygen he needs to survive, gain complete control over the functions of his mind, slip into a coma to conserve energy if he needs to, and even control his own body temperature. And that all probably sounds crazy until you realize this is a real technique that has been scientifically proven to work. Tumo can conserve and focus the body's energy enough to lower a subject's metabolism by 64%. To put that into perspective, your body's metabolism only slows by about 10 or 15% when you're sleeping. And this guy, Wim Hof, once ran a marathon in the Arctic Circle wearing nothing but shorts and was completely fine because of similar training. Martial arts expert David Kane taught Bruce several exotic fighting styles he hadn't studied before. And then the future Dark Knight eventually hit Russia, where he would perfect his engineering skills under a man who was essentially a mad genius named Sergei. He taught Bruce everything he knew about building, wiring, and thinking critically, and it all came to a climax when they went to Egypt and he sealed Bruce inside the Sphinx with a limited air supply and a handful of random gadgets. Build your way out or die. Bruce Wayne survived. Ultimately, there were a lot of people Bruce trained with. Martial arts experts we don't even get names for, 
assassins, sword fighting experts, brutal military leaders. He even studied both the light and dark sides of Taoism to channel his inner peace and rage, pushing him to levels humans normally just shouldn't be capable of. Heck, one of his masters could use this knowledge to trick opponents into literally thinking he was invisible. He studied with Richard Dragon, perhaps the single best martial artist in the world, and John Zatara, an expert escape artist, magician, and father of Bruce's future Justice League teammate, Zatanna. But Bruce couldn't have done any of this without the Uberman sleep schedule, a real-life sleep pattern that select people have adopted, only requiring about two to three hours of actual sleep every night. Don't try this yourself, but when you sleep, your brain goes through several stages of rest to keep your mind sharp. And the most important of these stages is called REM sleep. You typically get about one and a half hours of REM sleep a night, squeezed between several other stages. But adopting the Uberman sleep schedule changes things. Since it consists of six strategically placed 30 minute power naps, your mind eventually changes its method of rejuvenation to enter REM sleep as soon as you lose consciousness and you can get what is more or less a full night of sleep in two to three hours. There's no doubt this method is not only crucial to Bruce Wayne fighting crime as Batman, but crucial to finishing his training at all. Because when he returned to Gotham from his world tour, it had only been five years since he left. So who is Batman? He's a man. He studied dozens of academic subjects, knows nearly every martial art by training with their roots, and understands a variety of crime-fighting skills because he's practiced with the best. Are there things he doesn't know? Well, sure. He's admitted Wonder Woman and Shiva are probably better fighters than he is. His hacking skills aren't usually as good as Cyborg's, Constantine is generally a better planner, and Lex Luthor is smarter. But Batman is a representation of just how well-rounded a person can be. His records are on par with Olympians. His friends and co-workers are gods. I don't know if it's possible to be Batman in real life, but it's just close enough to our reach to make us really want to believe. To give us hope that we can stand among the Superman and Wonder Women with nothing but hard work and a goal. So if you want to do something or become something, go for it. It took Batman 17 years to get where he is today. So you won't wake up and have your dream tomorrow, but there's always more to learn, and there's always more you can become. So, become the best. Hey there, thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more or help support the channel, feel free to drop a like, subscribe, or check out more of our content. If you're already a subscriber, sorry it took so long to get this video out. I've been having some serious computer trouble, and I actually ended up having to buy a whole new system. I really appreciate the support, and I'd like to produce content more regularly in the future, but I don't have a set schedule yet. If you have any suggestions for when new videos should come out, let me know in the comments below or on Facebook or Twitter. I'll be watching. Until next time.